Howdy folks, we've got the infamous GM 3.6 liter. It's in tons of GM vehicles. This one's in a GMC Acadia, and it's in here for timing chains, which is something that they all do at some point in their life. Anyway, I've already got the powertrain drop, and I've also got the timing chain disassembled as well as the timing cover. So I'm just gonna show you how to put the timing back together in a simplified manner that's gonna save you a little bit of time if you are doing this at home. This can be done in the vehicle, it's a little bit more difficult. So if you've got a way to drop it, you can do it that way. Now, something that is common on these vehicles is the camshaft phasers. These phasers right here, they fill up with oil and they adjust the timing in a retarded or an advanced state. So I've already installed the new phasers and I've torqued down the brand new bolts to 43 foot-pounds and I'm gonna be setting the timing chain in one single phase. I'm not gonna be rotating the engine three times like the manual suggests. And I'm gonna show you that it's easy and simplified and that's just gonna be a more basic way to do it and it's gonna save you some time. We are gonna be installing the left side chain first. Now, all of these chains have colored links. One is charcoal, charcoal, and then we have a brass colored link which goes on the bottom. So first, we're gonna get it on the idler sprocket. We're gonna squeeze it in there. It will fit, I promise. There we go. And this hole right here is where the brass link is gonna shine first. We're not super concerned about that. We can rotate it once we get the top marks on. So we're gonna put the colored links on the camshaft phasers. And once this chain gets out of this hole. This is a little more awkward than it looks. Okay, now we've got to find, we've got, we got to move it over one little link. There you go. You can see the brass link through the hole on the idler. And now we're going to install the timing guys. We'll do this one first. Fits in there just like so. And these all get torqued to 18 foot-pounds, but I'm gonna use my handy-dandy Milwaukee ratchet just to snug them up first. Uh, so I did install this secondary guide. It does take a little finagling to get in there. You kind of have to get it horseshoed in there and then guide it up the chain because it has this backside guide right here that you have to kind of fit the chain into. And then you just tighten the bolt. That one's also gonna be 18 foot-pounds, but I'm gonna just snug it up for now. And now I'm ready for my tensioner on this side. And of course I'm installing all new components and the tensioners have their own little gaskets on them and you have to make sure all the surfaces are perfectly clean. Now, if you're using aftermarket tensioners, you have to delete something. Each one of these bolts on the factory components come with little rubber guides that fit in here. You have to delete those if you're using aftermarket tensioners and that's okay. So we're just gonna install that. Now, obviously, I've already prepped all of my surfaces and I'm ready for all new components. We're just going to snug that up. And we will torque that down later, but we will check our timing marks. We've got the carbon one here, one right here, and one that's visible through this hole. You see the, the gold colored link through that hole. So now we're ready to pull the first pin. And so that one's ready. Now we're going to move to our main chain here. Same story goes, we're going to get the chain out. This one, however, has three gold-plated links. So we're going to match the first link on this arrow here, on the left bank idler. And we're going to match it on the crank here. As you can see, we might have to rotate the crank slightly to get that to line up, which is no big deal. So we've got it lined up on the crank pulley. I did have to rotate it just slightly to make sure that lined up. Sometimes if you're taking an engine apart and the timing was off, you have to do some adjustments, which is okay. And now we're gonna line up this other gold colored link on the arrow on the right bank idler. Okay, just like that. So now we're gonna install our 
top tensioner shoe. And these are also torqued to 18 foot pounds. We're just gonna snug them up for now. for our tensioner. Okay, so now we're going to install the lower tensioner. I'm just going to put it in there. It may take a little bit of effort, but that's okay. And we're just going to snug it up. We will retorque everything when we're done. Okay, we'll check our timing marks. We've got here that lines up with this arrow. We've got this one that lines up and also the mark on the crank pulley. So now we'll go ahead and pull the pin. Okay, and then we'll do the last chain. Same story goes for the right bank. We've got two charcoal color links and a gold link. So we're gonna go ahead and get those on the right bank marks. They're labeled with an R and I've already went ahead and painted them white so they're a little bit more visible. And then we're going to put it over here to the, this hole is where this gold link goes, right there. So then we're going to go ahead and install our tensioner shoe. This side's a little bit easier, there's less stuff in the way. And we're going to snug it up. Looks like we might have to do some rotation to get this to be perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna install this tensioner here. I do have an assistant holding a little bit of pressure. The camshaft locking tools do allow a little deflection, so I'm just keeping it a little bit tighter. And we'll snug that up. tensioner. Anyway, so we're putting this last tensioner on and that's the last piece of the puzzle. I've already started the threads and I'm just going to snug them up and we'll pull the last pin and then we're done. And we'll do all of the guides. And then we're all done.